So hello, today I am very, very happy to present to you one of the most important people here in Bodrum, fellow expat and Bodrum resident, long-term resident, Chris Drum Berkaya. She's also the uh, creator and author of the Bodrum Echo newsletter and community, which has been bringing together expats for probably decades. Let's hear it from her. <laughs> hello, Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for a nice introduction. I mean, I have known you for so long, but yes. I realize that I actually don't know your original story. Um, so you're from Australia, aren't you? That's right. Yeah. From Melbourne area. Yes. And when did you come out to Bodrum? It's a, it's a funny story. It's a serendipity, really, because I was backpacking back in the 80s. <laughs> As you do. As you do, as you did. And we were, had got to Athens and life, you know, not quite, well, we were pretty geographically right, but we, it was end of October and we were sitting in an Athens hostel and with a, a girl from New Zealand I was travelling with and said, right, we've done Peloponnese, let's go to the islands now. And a guy overheard us and said, girls, you don't go to the islands at the end of October. <laughs> and they're closed. And they, oh, that, shit, that sorts out our plans, really, because we have to be back in London for Christmas. So we said, boo, what shall we do? He said, why don't you go to Istanbul? And I probably literally went, which was that? <laughs> It wasn't on our map at all. So we literally got on the bus and went to Istanbul. And I woke up in Istanbul and thought, this is fantastic. I'm back in a real live pulsing city. And we had a wonderful time in Istanbul. There were no books. It was pre-Lonely Planet. Just picked up brochures from the tourist department and talk to people and uh, just got ideas of where to travel. So we literally did the classic travel. We got on the bus to Chinakale. My Kiwi friend had great uncles buried there. And you couldn't see much, but we went around there and then just hopped dolmishes and buses down to Bergama, to Ephesus, Selchuk, got on the train, went to Denizli, Pamukkale, Antaya. And we'd been told you must go to Kush, one of the carpet shop touts <coughs> ah, in a couple of charsha, told us, told us to go to Kush. So we went to Kush and that's when I saw something like this. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, this is fantastic <laughs> because we'd been so cold. <laughs> And then everybody said, oh, you must go to Bodrum. And said, well, well, how do you get to Bodrum? Said, That's another bus or two or three. <laughs> That's a bus. And we had plans to go across to Rhodes and go back to Athens. So, okay, we'll take the bus all the way to Bodrum. And I literally had that moment of coming in the bumpy Dolmish. It was definitely a Dolmish. Over the hill at late afternoon, winter, and you see Bodrum all before you. And it was like, wow. The castle. The castle. All <laughs> white buildings, all that. It was like, oh, this is amazing. So we had the find the pension, find some somewhere open to have a soup or something, and wandered around. And next day, we talked to people in the pension and they said, oh, you have to go up to the castle, the museum. We go up to the museum. It's a weekend. Actually, I went by myself first because I was first out. Just wanted to wander around. So I go up to the castle, to the ticket office, and I ask something. And of course, the guy in the ticket window didn't know anything. So he called over somebody who turned out to be now my husband, Bahadur. Oh. 
That's wow. How it and so that was on that very first That's trip very out first. here. <laughs> Did you make it back to England for? <laughs> oh yeah, we, I was like, cool. Well, he's very nice. But, uh, you know, we got a program. Of course, we're not staying. We stayed a couple of days and then went down to Marmaris and then to Rhodes. But I mean, I have to stop you right there because we have to explain who Bahadur is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Who is so Bahadur? Bahadur is an archaeologist who's just retired from the Bodrum Castle Museum, underwater archaeology and many land excavations as well. So I've been involved through him with a lot of very exciting times and discoveries in Bodrum for archaeology and also learned a lot about how bureaucracy works in Bodrum or I mean, Turkey. I always think of you guys as the power couple because it's <laughs> your you are the expat resource for everybody and he's like you know one of the most uh, important people in the uh, formation and of the Bodrum Museum yes. as it is today yeah. and knows so much about the wonderful findings here so that's great I mean you've always had a really great um, you've had great insight into life here. Yes I've been very lucky in yeah. that way. I mean, it's a lot of question asking questions. How does this work? Why? Who? Why? You know. And so, let's explain why you are, why and how you are, such a great reason. <laughs> so Chris is also the uh, the creator of the Bodrum Echo newsletter and community. Um, can you explain a little bit about what that is? Um, Bodrum Echo. Well, developed from the time. 2006 when a few of us, uh, three women actually formed a company to set up Bodrum Observer newspaper, English newspaper. And that's not around anymore, is no, it? No, that only lasted yeah. two years. That was, okay. you'd have to say that was very pre-Facebook. Yeah. Look this way a little bit. Uh, yeah. At the same time, another, well, just before that, Another friend who's still here, Karen Aslan Saran, had started, we realised we had got beyond just meeting for coffee and sharing information about how to live here because the expat community was starting to grow. So she set up an email, basic email list, and we shared you know, how to, oh, I found this in the shop. There's a supermarket opening. There's a real <laughs> supermarket opening. <laughs> Uh, how to get driver's license, something, things like that. So that started very, probably about early 2001. So two. it started as like an e email, it's and it's email. become like a newsletter. It became a newsletter Wait, about 11 listings, years ago. Right? Yeah. Events listings, classified. Yes, yeah. And then what, like events. rentals? Mainly events. about events. Yeah. We wanted to tell people what's on. People have trouble like Could be louder. going around. I go I've still haunt billboards before because billboards sometimes tell you what's coming out before social media or anything. Yes. It's a yes. very strange timeline that's operated in Bodrum as far as publicity goes. But that all grew out of me working for the first job I had here was working as tour rep with the big English companies. And then later you were also a writer for Hurriyet, right? After, just at the end as Bodrum Echo faded, Hurriyet, Daily News then, and also a brief spell with Voices when they tried to come into Bodrum, and then with more travel articles with the guide Bodrum. Oh we, yes, the guide Bodrum. I remember publishing that. Publishing did the guide Bodrum. Yeah. The guide Istanbul. And so, how can people um, get onto your newsletter list? Do they? Is, is, well, no, is it, there a website? it's all access, of course, by via Facebook page, via the community group. So it's people big, can look for the yeah. Bodrum Echo community, right? That's right. And yeah. That's Just how they get to the Just look for the page or the group and ask to join and communicate. 
So. And another way that uh, Chris is involved with the expat community is that she's one of the organizers of the interna Internation's professional international networking community, right? They call it the Connection of Global Minds. The <laughs> Connection of Global Minds. Uh, Internation's is a worldwide website that was set up 16 years ago, I think, and we set up 14 years ago in Bodrum. We were very fortunate. Susan Marichal came here and said, we should all be networking a bit more, you know, not just on Facebook or something, but actually meeting up regularly. I remember that, and I think I've been, I've been to parties on a yacht, a huge yacht that was docked right, right out yeah. here where Halikarnas once was. Um, I've been to, yeah, I've been to lovely little like cocktail type settings at El Vino. That's right. And then re more recently, just this week, we, we had a blast. In fact, if we seem tired, it's because of that. There was a Mardi Gras party that Internations right. held at La Boheme, right on the beach in Ortikant Yashi. And it was so much fun. Um, we were encouraged to come in costumes, but those who didn't were given masks. Which was very nice, great mouth. And everybody, <laughs> everybody, everybody got in the spirit. Was really yeah. glittery. The music and the DJ Levant is, I mean, it was the most perfect classic rock swing type music playing. Everything. It was, uh, I don't know, how many people were there? 50? Well, it was seemed to be about 40. I'd lost count. Yeah, lost count. I definitely <laughs> People lost coming count. and going too. It was so much fun. And I met um, so many people from around the world and yeah. also um, Turks that had just moved out, moved out here yeah. in all, all sorts of professions and all sorts of ages. It was... Oh, uh, it's not an expat group as such. It's, it's everybody who has moved to a new place and of trying to find their feet and find their connections and okay maybe some business connections but social and just like oh, I want to go out I want to do something I want to meet people and as what I call repats Turks who've come back from other countries are still looking for that different sort of connection with people so you might say well Oh, I've got my own social group in Bodrum. I don't need to meet any people. But for me and a lot of people, we like to keep refreshing ourselves as a social connections, not solid groups, but to be able to meet people wherever you go and say, hi, you know, how are you? Or, have, let's have a drink. And to welcome newcomers. Yes, There's so many new, new people that come. I mean, but also at the party, you said to me, what? We've had a wedding from one of these. We've yeah. had a, maybe probably business We've partnerships. We've had a lot form. of really good friendship groups yeah. set up, you know, which is really satisfying for me to see that happen. Um, okay, people come and go, but then uh, we get, uh, yeah, the breeze is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's different people meeting each other. And it's like people they can talk to and say, okay, let's all go. Like last week, 10 of us went with, in, as internations to, on the ferry to Dutcha. Oh, how wonderful. To the festival. Yes, mm -hmm. just for the day. And that's a group. And it's a, something you do a call out on the website and say, hey, I want to do this. Does anybody want to come? So new people can say, yeah, can I come too? You know? And it's a place you it's a safe place you can say, I can come. Absolutely. Yeah. And then how often do you hold the, uh, your, the events? Uh, it's just changed format now. It's monthly, we have a sort of big group. And then if people want to do an activity, say wine tasting or a lunch or a dinner, they can call that or we can call it and say, or go to a festival. So, Got it something like that or go to a film you know we should all be watching Oscar films now so. yeah that, that's true so do some or of go those down events. to the beach last year we had two lots of boat trips like big boat trips we followed the Bodrum Cup in October that was the, on the last day I remember that so we've done that two years running because you can't miss the Bodrum Cup really and yeah. not everybody can get on a the official fleet Absolutely, that's that's an opportunity when you know yeah. some of the most beautiful boats. We swam. We had lunch. We went out. We and went out on the um, 
Like, like we'll, we'll expect these boats race around this yeah. peninsula and uh, they offer the opportunity for spectators to join exactly. on. You know, you don't have to be part of the race, but yeah. you get to experience the excitement. And so you're part of organizing the well, boat. Well, we, we're sort of adjunct. Yeah. We can't obviously go on the big gullets, but people who are like, what is this Bodrum Cup about? And I, I'm happy to see anybody go, oh, I really want to get involved in that yeah. from that. We went out in a day boat, you know, there's about 40 people. And that takes so everybody stopped, we just followed the fleet. We went out in the Karen boat last year and Zach took us around Black Island and we just followed, we were just shadowing the fleet. Of course, they go, they change their route with the wind. So we, we could get some great film shots and then go, oh, well, have a swim and lunch then and see where they come back. <laughs> so it's good fun. It is good fun. So that's held every October, is that correct? That's October, yeah. yeah. The last sec third or last week of October. So what I always enjoy asking our um, Bodrum residents is what a typical day is like. What's a, what's a normal day like for you here? There's a winter day and a summer day. <laughs> That's true. Here we are in winter, although it does not look like it. We yes. should have brought our bathing suits. Okay, so what is a day like for you in well, winter? Like this morning, <laughs> I, I'm, I am very happy that Bodrum has finally got rowing clubs back here. Yeah. I used to row in Melbourne, competition, but I don't row now, but competition. But they've got coastal rowing, which is a really great social and not so competitive, you can be competitive, but of exercise. And when you've got weather like this, you can really enjoy it. And we just, I'm in the Bites, the Halikanas Club, which is one end of Bites. There's three more, and the Bodrum Bolivia have got a couple of small two-person boats out oh, from wow. Itchmiller as well. Oh, that's wonderful, and it's such a beautiful place to it's, it's perfect it's yeah it's been perfect gross. for a long i've been thinking it's been perfect for a long time but uh so that's what you turkish do. rowers have come down from istanbul and set them up and it's it's a great thing it's a really nice group building exercise so there's going to be a between company race in april so what's with, that <laughs> well Jelal Hoja, who's the head of the Halikanas Correct Club, is a former competition rower. And he's gone to the Chamber of Commerce in Bodrum and said, why don't you get some team building exercises, get the companies to compete against each other with their teams. So that will happen in April. Oh, how wonderful. So it's a new, so, it's a new exercise. So companies it's, will have their teams rowing. Yes. I get, oh, so we'll they have, have to, to do a bit of training. I mean, it's fitness without realizing you have to be fit. Yeah, and it's, so, it's an adventure too. It it's is. a really, yeah. uh, it's one of those bucket list items. Certainly. Or things that I never thought about doing rowing. <laughs> but and I the, like it, because I've always liked it because it's a non-impact, you know, not on your knees, not on your ankles. I don't run. <laughs> Oh, and yeah, then, I mean, other people run. There's some great row running clubs here. Otherwise, Wonderful I, I do try to walk in the morning. That's in winter, even in summer. In summer, I might come down here for an early morning swim. Yep. The 8 o'clock swimming club in Kumbacha is very active. Oh, okay. <laughs> people meet at 8 a.m. and swim? Yes. Just from right here? Just here. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> See, this is, this is my favourite morning beach morning beach and then where do you like to go oh where do you like to go at night or okay let's day. finish with the typical it's day summer we'll finish with the typical day so then what do you do what do you do in the afternoon well i, I do some work with um, writing if i can um, other days i'm also involved in the bodroom humanity the charity aid group so there's some oh, and they did a lot of help with the earthquake relief efforts we did, didn't they? We did. and uh and even before that i mean there's there's waves of we were involved in the fires that took out these yeah. hills two years ago uh we're sort of a first aid type spot i mean we don't we're also doing children's art tutorial groups and we've started a women's sewing Classes. That's wonderful. I mean, we're, a lot of people are doing the same thing, but it's it's just reaching the people 
when you think about Bodhi, you think, oh, it's rich, the, the great life, you know, but there are some people seriously falling through the gaps. So that's where people, uh, families who have moved here to try and work, you know, the labouring people, the builders, uh, workers, wives, families, who just have to find their way to live here, the schools, the education and connections as well, and they have needs. So we also go to the Bites Bit Bazaar, which is where we actually meet. We do find people who need have needs that haven't said connected to any agency that can help them. Do you guys have a stand at the We have Bit a stand Bazaar, sometimes, not, not a regular one, but. Uh, once a month, mm -hmm. and that's the Bites flea Bit market Bazaar, the flea on market. Uh, Sundays. Sundays, yeah. Um, and that's a nice little community, by the way. <laughs> it is a nice <laughs> little community. I went on Saturday, um, and uh, and so where do you like to go at night? Like, what are some of your three favorite places that you like to go at night? Well, <laughs> we've had a lot of phases of where to go. Right. I mean, I, I do, we do like to come down here to Red Pan and just hang out and have tea, and especially in summer, it's cool. That's you right, to, we're at Red yeah. Pan Pizzeria, right across from the castle. Um. Um, I like to uh, actually go to well, some of my favourite places. They chop and change. So I was going to craft, but that's just changed mode. We used to go to Sunga a lot. Mm -hmm. That was a good spot to just meet people. In fact, I remember saying when Sunga 15 years ago, you know, this is the most egalitarian place in Bodrum because everybody comes in and out so you can see, have a chat to everybody. Um, I actually really love the Boledia cafes now, the Trafo. Yes, it's, they're gorgeous, the aren't Trafo they? The Trafo is fantastic. And going around, perhaps on the beach at Giritli Teze. At where? Giritli Teze, which Giritli -teze. opens around mm -hmm. in summer, near, tri near the cruise port side. Giritli Teze, Trafo, and yeah. Red Pan Pizza. Red Pan, that's, that's without walking. If we're going out, yell at Chiflik every time. And then I also uh, should tell our viewers that um, I saw Chris honored by the mayor of Bodrum at a yearly event that happens every he, year at Trafo. I Trafel. think he threw me under the bus, actually. <laughs> no, it was wonderful. She was put up on a huge stage every year, uh, right around Christmas time. The mayor holds an event for all of the expats, and it's they're getting bigger and bigger with a whole full stage and a performing band. And uh, the mayor asked, you know, Chris to come up on stage, and we all got to. Hundreds of thousands were there clapping her for just all thousands. the ways she's helped us, you know, which she's ex given, explained and given some insight to uh, with all of the different activities she has going on here. Well, um, someone, had to, someone had to reply with thanks to the mayor. I mean, he really gave a nice welcome speech that well, two years ago, unfortunately, because of events, um, happening on the southeast border, they cancelled it for the Christ this Christmas, 2023. But we'll be back, hopefully, with 2024. 20, <laughs> and so I've got to ask, because you would know, where do the expats go in Bodrum? Any it's, top spots you recommend newcomers to find other foreign uh, residents here? That's such a mixture. I think it's much less classifiable than, say, people think of as Didim or Fethia and less Anglo-Saxon. There's a bigger mixture. And actually, the mayor's office has said that the highest uh, number of foreigners registered here, resident, are uh, like the Russian-speaking states, Kazakhstan's, of course, Russia and Ukrainian has been very strong. Uh, Germans, British, Dutch, all sorts. Of, it's a really, like the rest of Bodrum, it's a very mixed place. So you have to, and then you've got the bays. So Yalakavak will go to J. Joe's, Delhi Divan, Bilbao bars. Gamush, look, it might have been, it might be around some of the bars that are back off the, 
the uh, front. I guess Earth Pub now, or the, yeah. And you got Wonderhaven. Is it Wonderhaven Wonder camping? Mm -hmm. Camping and it depends if you like music, live music, dancing, or just hanging out, watching the world go by. Target Reefs is much more an Anglo sort of area, so you've got Paddy's Bar, you've got a couple of bars down the street in the centre there. And everybody has their favourite spot. Uh, you go to move around to Bites, and then you've got a couple of the small bars there. Humbug, uh, San Marcos Chinese, a key bar, right near the mosque, that area. Gumbet uh, seems to enjoy Cheers Bar, Hollywood. I mean, that's, then you've got football, the Gumbet people are the star for themselves. They love their football, they love their good drink, and they love a good crack. You know. There's a bit of competition now setting in with the Irish, new Irish bar in Oasis, just opened. What's that called? The Irish bar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Irish bar seems to have a magnetic attraction all around Anywhere. the world. <laughs> and has given us. And so what about Bodrum Centre? Bodrum's lost a bit of it. It tends to be, there's less expats actually living in Bodrum. I think they've all dispersed out. So uh, you could say around Black Rock. Black really. Rock. Churchill's, right? Church Churchill's, not so no. much now. Pie Cafe? Pie Cafe, Pie, yes. P pie. We have quiz nights there. Quiz nights at Pie Cafe. Yeah. Uh, um, some of those small bars that are very friendly and they recognise their regulars. Any bar that recognises their regulars and looks after them is really the favourite place. I mean, that works for everybody. It's just if you get service, if you recognise, you're welcomed, then you're happy. And isn't that sort of what Bodrum is and Turkey is famed for? That's, that's, that is exactly why people are here yeah because they feel welcome they feel comfortable they have the they can have friends of all nationalities and it's not ghettoized put it that way I always say I feel like I'm um, in the Los Angeles of uh, Turkey you know it's like California in Turkey why have you chosen to, to spend your life here because that it it's appeals to me, my whole background is a very small farming community way out in the back of nowhere of Australia. So anywhere that's got a cross section of people, I seem to be attracted to, where you've got new people and new conversations. And you're the reason, I mean, you're, you're the one that brings them all together. So it seems like that was your sometimes, true sometimes calling. Sometimes, sometimes I manage I it. mean, Chris has really been just a wonderful resource for me um, and every expat pretty much that I know here and continues to be. Um, so follow her. <laughs> one of my main philosophies is that I hate seeing people trying to reinvent the wheel, which is like, chasing the same information that someone else was chasing two years ago or a year ago. So if we share what we know, and we can all make life, because there are bumps here, there are challenges, just to get through those and actually enjoy what's actually here. I mean, that's, that's true. The Bodrum Echo community, especially on Facebook, is a place I learn where as much. people can just ask any questions they have. And yes, Chris or the members, I mean, everybody just comes together and helps everyone out. And so, yeah, I mean, I can't recommend uh, Bodrum Echo community and the newsletter enough. And the internation parties are really fun here. Cream Thanks on the to cake. Griff. <laughs> the cream on the Absolutely. cake. Absolutely. <laughs> but also the other organizations that she uh, helps out with, we're gonna provide info about all of them. And thank you for sharing a little bit about your life here. And uh, yeah, it's been wonderful to sit with you and on this, winter day oh, trust me it is winter <laughs> our new winter our new winter <laughs> yeah 
So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank you, Chris, for, for uh, having us meet here at Red Pan Pizzeria. This is really one of the uh, most prime spots to get a view of the castle, be right on the beach, and uh, it's, they make great pizza. It's a really popular place for people to come and sit and watch the sunset. And the owners were really, really kind in uh, letting us take one of their prime spots today. But we come here and we'll be back. This is one of the hangouts and it's a beautiful spot. See you next time.